told you guys there's going to be a lot of explosions in this episode uh one major problem though you guys can probably see in the background i have royally angered every single piglin let me give you guys a little bit of a closer look so i'm not 100 percent sure if you guys can hear that and you saw that but there's piglins that are sinking into the lava and i'm not exactly 100 percent sure where they are this is a lot better of a look right here to kind of show you guys the sense of scale of how angry these guys are but in other news we cleaned out this entire area blew up a bunch of this area over here that i still need to get around to but needless to say not going to be able to get around to that for a little while because all the piglins are royally pissed so i'm gonna head on over here and i'm gonna continue to keep on leveling out this entire area gotten rid of all the lava and of course finish everything behind me right here I've gone through quite a few pickaxes, so it's probably best we start off by repairing our pickaxes. If you guys missed the last episode, check it out. I'm going to put it up in the right-hand corner of the screen so you guys could check out the last episode if you may have missed it. It was a really good one. I might be a bit biased, though. And if you haven't done so already, please leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing if you guys want to see some more. Now, time to wait for the Guardian Farm to fill up. Light the TNT and repair tools and remember cool guys don't look at explosions that should be enough experience yeah there is something so satisfying about watching the durability slowly climb up when repairing pickaxes is it just me or do you guys feel the same way i'm hoping one day i'll reach 1 million guardians killed so far i'm more than halfway there but speaking about halfway done, I am nowhere near halfway done the nether perimeter. So I guess it's time to get back to digging, especially while I wait for these guys to calm down a little bit. I don't know if me being over there digging is going to help out, but I definitely can't be within this area, at least not without maybe draining the lava to kill them before proceeding. Maybe I'm not too sure, but let's get into it. now officially hit our first stack of ancient debris so that's nice mind you it took this entire area to be completely dug out from y32 and below to get a full stack of ancient debris so that kind of puts it into perspective how rare ancient debris is and major respect to everybody who has another eye beacon in their world but i think this looks absolutely amazing so far We've only done a little bit of a sliver, but it's looking extremely cool. And I can't wait to get more and more of this done. The lava, I'm not really looking forward to. So, yeah. Speaking of lava, these guys are still mad at me. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's been literal days. I don't know how to make these guys not upset with me, but I might have to drain this area out and honestly kill all the piglin in the vicinity. So that's fun speaking of fun every single one of these shulker boxes behind me are completely full of resources and i've started to throw out resources so i guess i'm gonna go load up my storage room apparently this is gonna take me multiple trips because yeah the shulker monster is real and naturally basalt and polished basalt are fully stocked up inside the storage room 
which means that we're gonna have to start putting some stuff away inside the silos right here where i can start basically filling up these guys and there you have it that feels so much better oh, to be fully organized in the storage room to be completely packed but we got more work to do so let's get back to it and now that we got this entire section completely drained out and dug down to bedrock i think it's about time i kind of go over a little bit of the plan that i have for this entire perimeter now most of you guys already know that i want to build a gothic city up in here kind of like gotham city but how are we going to go about that is i think this entire wall here needs to be completely blacked out with black concrete but not just that one wall in particular it's going to be all of the walls and even the ceiling to create that nighttime effect that we're looking for which if my math is correct which it never really is that should be about 75 shulker boxes of black concrete which is going to be quite a bit and checking the storage room to see if we have any black concrete on hand we have a little bit of each but we have a lot of time to get all the resources for this so back to the concrete farm where you guys will find me with my spare time when i'm not digging i'll be converting concrete and i don't know if i showed you guys this yet with the concrete machine but it does work off a non-duping i basically just fill it up with a bunch of tnt and then i work it off of a clock here you guys can copy this if you guys would like but it's honestly pretty perfect which i believe with that configuration it gets you 17 concrete for every tnt i know you could use uh some fancy doodad magic but i'm not fancy oh but i'm good at flying into walls speaking of walls let me show you guys exactly what i mean by having completely blacked out walls and a roof here by placing some concrete now it doesn't go all the way up to the top but i think that basically shows you guys exactly what the wall is basically going to look like so envision this entire thing is just all black concrete i left a little bit of a gap on the bottom which doesn't matter because obviously we're going to be putting our floor down here and then I left a gap over here on the side because this is where the conjoining wall is going to go, going down that side. But I think that's absolutely gorgeous. Also, I'm thinking about putting my buildings maybe around here. So we're going to come in a another like 10 blocks or so. That way I can actually have like a variation of different kind of cloud effects, like with the various different heights and stuff like that. But obviously that's going to take me quite some time to get all the black concrete to do this entire perimeter. I figured it out i found out exactly why the picklins are upset with me and you guys aren't gonna guess why so i started noticing that this problem would follow me around outside of my nether hub you can see that the even the zombified pickings here are upset with me so it really got me thinking how is that possible that they're always mad at me no matter how far away i get from where i'm actually doing the wither skeleton perimeter and let me see if i can find the culprit here so finding the culprit has become a little bit more of a difficult task so i'll explain things to you guys as we go so in my world i have a data pack that when i kill certain corresponding mobs they drop their heads such as gas the problem with gas dropping their heads and let me see if i can make this happen here for you guys is oh okay there he goes so see that that right there is the issue when these guys pick up the heads of the gas that i kill they now become a mob that will not despawn meaning i will actually have a ton of these hiding underneath the lava of my wither skeleton farm which is going to be an absolute nightmare so i got good news and i got bad news good news is that this episode is about to be an absolute mega episode bad news this episode is going to take a very very long time and i'm probably going to finish this project in the meantime if you haven't caught any of these episodes put a card up in the right hand corner of the screen for you guys because yes you have guessed it i will have to drain out all of the lava out of the entire perimeter which is going to be an absolute mega amount of work i'm going to be using obviously a lot of sand to create a lot of the borders around the perimeter but 
also going to be going with flying machines and this is going to be the flying machine that we're going to use i don't know which way this thing's going to go so hopefully it goes that way i'm gonna kind of hopefully i don't know let's, let's hope let's hope it goes that way but anyways i'll link the video inside the description for you guys it's incredibly easy to build and if i built everything properly it should go just like which will remove all the lava for us extremely quickly time to test something out real quick does it go back oh, snap. It, it it might it it might only go one way hmm you sure oh yep yep it, it only goes one way it only goes one way which is gross that means that we will have to basically rebuild this drop a layer rebuild it drop a layer rebuild it drop a layer which wouldn't be that big of an issue if we duplicated tnt but since we don't duplicate tnt we don't have the luxury of getting rid of all of the stuff in front of our thingy majig that thing is over there so that means that we have to do things the long and complicated and hard and gross way um but it should definitely speed up the process and be a heck of a lot quicker than scaffolds so i'm just gonna touch grass in the meantime because i don't think i'm gonna be seeing the overworld here for a little while so oh, that's a moss block can't be touching on that actual grass you know what i mean in the meantime i've got some pickaxes to repair and some work to get done so i'll see you guys in just a bit and that should hold us over for a little while that's actually my main pickaxe and for those of you guys who may be curious, I've now killed 541,525,000 guardians and 23,698 magma cubes. I'd say that's pretty decent. Speaking of decent, that was a pretty omega sized time lapse for y'all of you guys. Clearly, we managed to get rid of all of the lava. So I pretty much decided to do that because of the piglins. I couldn't get rid of the piglins. They were nonstop attacking me. So with help of the flying machines, getting rid of all the lava in this area. Hold. Was actually not that bad. And speaking about not actually that bad to take out this entire chunk all the way down to that entire chunk takes me about three hours worth of digging if I'm being pretty consistent with it. So you guys saw that in the time lapse. That's a I don't know how many layers that is exactly. Let me see here. Uh, that's about 20 layers. Yeah, it's about 20 layers. 
of just pure digging all the way down one chunk at a time pretty much just f3 and g show me exactly where the chunks are located and then i just kind of dig them all the way down uh, i will be slabbing them all up as i move forward but speaking about moving forward you guys may have noticed that i've been doing a little bit of work over here with the black concrete wall this is about five shulker boxes of black concrete which is just a stupid amount uh i'm completely out of gravel at this point probably got to run it back with all the uh with all that i don't know how much um i don't know how much black concrete that's gonna take but it's gonna be quite a bit and speaking of quite a bit we finally hit it one million basalt so we got to add that to our one million board that brings us up to almost four hundred thousand basalt mines since we started this project and for our magma cubes, we're up towards to 24,000. That's definitely slowed down a little bit more now that we're making our way out of the basalt delta. Now it's time to rename this basalt and add it to our 1 million board. If you guys made it to this part of the video, put hashtag 1 million inside of the comment section down below just so I know you guys were here for this massive achievement. It's been a long time since we've added some to our board, especially for the 1 million club that I got going on here in the world. My own little achievements and stuff, but... For those of you guys who are wondering, it's going to go inside of this building right here. And I will do the bottom side of this build. Don't worry. That is going to be a side project. It's just a little bit freaky working that close to the void. But without further ado, let's go ahead and like add this up to our board here. So this board right here. So everything you guys see here has hit 1 million. Whether it's netherrack, stone, damage, uh, distance walked, uh, mobs killed, experience gained. You name it, it's all up there. If anything's into the 1 millions, we've got our emeralds here. But now, we're going to be naming our basalt and we're going to be adding it to our book. That should do it. Now, the only thing I got to do is just light up the lamp behind it. Just like that. Another item to hit 1 million in the world. But let me show you guys around here a little bit. So, this is actually a very, very special room. We have every single farm every single well not every single farm i actually probably have to add a few things to that this is every mega build i have in the world right here so we just finished the bee and spider build and i'm working on the flying boat right now this right here is every 5,000 days that i've accomplished in the world we'll be hitting that 40,000 days here extremely soon within the 200 day mark of that down here I have my 100k on Twitch or YouTube, sorry. And then we have the 100k on Twitch. Just recently passed over two years without popping a totem. And then the progression of every single year that I've had this world for. So we're now going for our five year mark. I don't know what that will be. It'll probably be something to do with whatever we're doing within that year or whatever comes out in an update or something like that. But if for those of you guys who are looking for motivation in your worlds, this is a really good place to start and i almost forgot but we also have to add the basalt to the book here too speaking of which i'm extremely close to hitting that five million for jumps and i think down here i'm pretty close to hitting two million for villager trades so i see some upgrades in the future and as for all the farms in the world i'm probably going to be adding a mushroom stem farm because that's the most recent farm that i've got and a concrete farm in here as well i think those would be two very great additions to add to our board all right and like i said before we're going to add the concrete powder to the board and we're also going to add the mushroom because now we have concrete farm and a mushroom farm so let's go ahead and light up the lamps and it actually looks like i'm going to need to swap these guys out for some uh glow glow item frames or something so let me see if i've got any of those kicking around in here oh i just barely have enough okay nice i do have the squid ink out here and then i'll just go on the other side and i'll flick on the levers so new additions to the world all right i want to use that one white concrete powder and the red uh the red mushroom come across the back side and i will turn on the levers uh i think it's this one and that one which leaves us five more spots available to add five more farms. I would like to get a shulker farm on here. And well, I guess we don't really have a wither skelly farm at the moment. So yeah. But anyways, that's that all done and added to the board. But speaking about concrete, I need some concrete, but I don't think I have. Yeah, no, we don't have any gravel. 
so we're gonna have to go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of gravel so we can make up some concrete so we can continue on with this project because what good is it to have a concrete farm when you have zero concrete to fill it with you know so we're gonna have to go find ourselves a gravels mountain i've got a bunch of shulker boxes and i'm gonna go fill them up got myself a gravels mountain over here i'm gonna yoink all the gravel i could possibly get and hopefully that will be enough to finish a little bit more of our wall that we're working on with all that said and done here's going back to the base and hoping that i actually have sand over there okay please tell me we have sand because i did use a lot recently you know what i think that's enough sand and with one problem down arises the next problem i'm completely out of black dye here we can go check the squid farm to see if we have any leftover ink sacs but we might have to make a bunch of wither roses using our enderman farm this is a farm you don't see me in too often oh no it's not looking too good over here well yeah <laughs> i don't think we're getting enough i don't think we're getting enough ink sacks from this wow well i guess it's time to convert wither roses but i guess now would be a perfect time while we're on our way over to the end so i can show you guys how i convert wither roses if you guys haven't done so maybe check out my episodes over on the mushroom stuff i'm building up a flying ship here that you guys have probably seen just bits and pieces of but i think this is really shaping up if you guys want to see how this project's going check it out there's a little bit of a hidden farm inside that ship just so you know one major thing that we can definitely benefit from getting all these wither roses here in the end is the amount of beacons that we're hopefully going to get from this I got enough beacons right now, but I could definitely do with some more. But also, this is my nether hub. And by nether hub, I mean end hub. Pretty cool, huh? We even got space right here. We got aliens on Mars. We have Uranus. We have this guy being objected from uh, Earth, from space. We even have the ender dragon and stuff like that. But anyways, I got some black dye to get. And briefly, before we start farming up some of these wither roses, let me show you guys a little bit of the new configuration for the wither rose farm. So I did change a bunch of stuff around here. You guys will notice. Yeah, they're falling straight down. And that's because down here is actually a skulk farm, which is really, really cool. So I could basically just sit here and go back and forth and farm up all the skulk. But it's not only just a skulk farm, but it's also an enderman farm that I can convert over to wither roses. If I can get my slabs in place here, I think I might actually have to light up the platform before I actually get my slabs in here. So yeah, let, let, let me do, let me do that up real quick. Now, let me just fly away and let the enderman basically despawn. And then we can go back and place our slabs back. I'm also working on a little bit of the glass down here and I do have my volume off because the wither is just uncontrollably loud. It's uh, ridiculous, but flying on down in here, we can then place down our slabs here. I need these slabs here just because I need to keep the all a in place. This all a is holding a wither rose here, as you guys will see, and hopefully, okay, good. It didn't fly right out. Now we're going to get ready to basically place this guy up and then we're going to convert a bunch of wither roses and i'll show you guys exactly how that is done so i'm just going to collect up all the torches up here to reactivate the farms this is a three in one this means that i can farm endermen i can farm wither roses i can farm stars i guess i guess the four for a four for one uh and i can also get skulk from this farm too so now that we got our torches done here, we'll start seeing all of our endermen basically fall down here any second, any second. Oh, there they are. See, now that they're falling down in here, they're basically falling and it being like one hit. Wait for this thing to fill up. Sometimes they'll like teleport out because they do take damage and they can teleport out. Pop our torches back. Then we'll grab our soul sand and we will grab our wither skulls. And then basically start killing all of our withers. Like this. And 
as soon as the wither basically blows up it'll convert all of the endermen into wither roses and you'll see that the all a is going to go in there it's going to pick up all the wither roses and it's also going to drop it off into a box in behind our enderman farm so i got this guy back here let me check this guy out oh my gosh almost fell into the void lovely uh right back here just like that so i'll be over here i'll be farming up some wither roses but there should be more than enough wither roses for now this is going to be plenty of black dye to create as much black concrete as we possibly can at least for now for the time being Well, that's another four boxes of black concrete done for our wall here. I know it doesn't look like a whole lot, but I can assure you it is an absolute ton of black concrete. I'm officially out of sand. I'm officially out of gravel and I'm officially out of black dye. And this episode has been taking a very long time to put together for all the progress that we have gotten done. I am fairly happy with what we got done today. And having a little bit of a look from way up here, you can kind of take in exactly how much lava we got rid of and how big that wall is over there. All the beacons set in place. And I wonder if we'll be able to fit a gold farm in here. What do you guys think? You guys think that we'd be able to put not only a wither skeleton farm in here, but do you think we could get away with putting a gold farm in here as well? It looks like a good portion of this stuff is nether waste. So maybe we could sneak a gold farm in here as well. And you guys may have just noticed that I'm incredibly close to hitting 40,000 days in this hardcore world, which means that it's about that time of year. It's world tour time. If you guys want to see what other incredible builds are going on throughout the world and whatever else I'm working on currently, that will be the perfect time to do so because I can promise you this. It will absolutely blow you away. I have so many mega projects on the go that I think you guys will thoroughly enjoy. So until next time, I hope you guys all have yourself a wonderful day. Leave a like if you enjoyed today's episode because it did take a lot of hard work. And if you guys want to see some more, consider subscribing and I hope to see you guys in the world tour.